Ever since Margaret Thatcher became Prime Minister more than 30 years ago, successive British governments have tried to privatise key functions of the modern state. Gas and electricity suppliers, refuse and cleaning services, all sold off. Now there are plans to privatise the police. Can that be right? Hello and welcome to A Simple Question with me, Phil Rees, outside the Royal Courts of Justice here in London. Britain already has the most privatised criminal justice system in Europe. A small number of multinationals provide services to prisons, police stations and the courts. But should this ideological commitment to privatisation extend to the justice system? Should an employee of a private security firm be able to make an arrest? Well, before we find out what the public thinks, here's a short video clip. These court interpreters are feeling the effect of the privatisation of the justice system. They're protesting outside the Ministry of Justice because a private company, Applied Language Solutions, has been awarded the sole contract to supply court translation services in England and Wales. Courts previously hired freelance interpreters from a national register. Now they are provided by Applied Language Solutions, which has promised to cut the annual £60 million translation bill by a third. 60% of the 2,300 of those on the National Register of Public Service Interpreters are refusing to work for the new agency after their pay was slashed. The Professional Interpreters Alliance said incompetent interpreters are now being used and the contract could lead to miscarriages of justice. The introduction of private companies to carry out jobs traditionally performed by government workers is part of an ideology that believes society is better off when profit motivates all human activity. Now, two of Britain's largest police forces have invited bids from major security companies on behalf of all forces across England and Wales to take over a wide range of services previously carried out by the police. Private companies could take responsibility for investigating crimes, patrolling neighbourhoods and even detaining suspects under a radical privatisation plan being put forward by the West Midlands and Surrey. The contract is the largest on police privatisation so far, with a potential value of £1.5 billion over seven years, rising to £3.5 billion if other forces get involved. Prisons are also being privatised with all contracts going to the two major global private security companies, Serco and G4S. Britain already has the largest private prison sector in Europe, with a value of £2.5 billion over seven years. Unison and Unite, the two largest public sector trade unions, warned that the privatisation of policing services would damage public safety. Privatisation will mean less regulation and accountability for Britain's criminal justice system. So is it right that large corporations can profit from public money? And will a corporate police force serve the interest of the public? A Simple Question is a show that finds out what the public thinks here on the streets of London. I began today by asking what people knew about the privatisation of the justice system. Why is the government doing it? What do they have to gain? I know that um, you know there's been huge debates about limiting um, trial by jury. Um, I know that uh, the idea of privatising prisons is another thing, uh, various security firms, uh, that sort of thing. What do you know about the privatisation of the UK justice system? Do you know what's been going on? Well, all I know about is Group 4, really. That's a private company, but other than that, I wouldn't say I know anything about it at all. No, I don't know anything specific about it. I just know that they're, uh, well, they're trying to cut lots of lots of the budget and so they're trying to privatise things. So. They've been wanting to privatise prisons, obviously um, want to make more money I guess out of it. Um, haven't really looked about it into a lot but um, I know prisons need a big upgrade and maybe privatisation might be an answer. Why do you think the government wants to privatise the justice system and what do they get out of it? Well I think in the, in the long run it's going to cost them more money than anything. So why privatise stuff? Why don't just leave it as it is? Less pressure, um, probably more, um, well, they won't have to be take responsibility for, for its failures or um, lack of funding or, um, you know, more, I suppose it's less, yeah, less 
less pressure for the government. Money, essentially. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of this government. So my personal opinion is just um, it's, it's it's a way to make more money. Um, don't really care very much about public services because essentially it's a, a cabinet full of billionaires, really. So or millionaires. So haven't really got much of an opinion on on public services anyway. So yeah, purely money based, I think. So those were the views of the public here on the streets of London. But what do our experts have to say? Firstly, the government to say that they are privatising in order to save money and uh, which everyone says about privatisation, save money and make the system more efficient. Uh, in the uh, field of interpreting, this has been proven to be not the case. Uh, it started at the end of uh, January uh, this year, so uh, is um, into its sixth week or so and it's causing absolute, absolute chaos uh, within the uh, criminal justice system and I don't think this is healthy because uh, it will not serve justice. Uh, it has already uh, uh, shown signs of uh, delays in the system, delays in court uh, and, and, and consequently in order to implement uh, this program. It's an agency that has been given uh, the same budget or less budget because the government wants to save money, so they, they, they actually had an agency that put the lowest bid. So the lowest bidder is running a system whereby uh, they have to make uh, their profit, pay their uh, overheads, and of, after this, interpreters uh, are paid. Uh, one of the main things that I personally uh, am concerned about is that uh, dealing with the criminal justice system in particular, uh, Given in the details uh, of uh, these cases to be run uh, through a private agency, uh, where these details of these cases uh, going to be kept, uh, how much vetting the staff that uh, work for this agency have, uh, do they have a secure system enough to keep criminal justice data uh, uh, and then what kind of a storage retrieval system uh, and that should apply uh, or applies actually to defendants, witnesses, victims and interpreters alike. These cases contain and um, may contain uh, details that are very highly confidential. Uh, giving it to a private agency, I think it's a huge mistake. The previous government um, under Labour, there was, they, they introduced a market into criminal justice, um, but um, they, it was limited and they, um, they weren't um, privatising, for example, prisons. They were building new private prisons, but not privatising public sector prisons. That's changed. We've now had the first public sector prison, Birmingham, privatised uh, under the new coalition government, and another nine prisons are now being market tested with privatisation in mind. Um, and also the other thing that the new government is doing, which is new, is looking at privatising services in the community, so probation services. And again, just this week, we've seen two reviews published, one of which talked about how they wanted to introduce um, a more sophisticated market into probation and see uh, many more private and voluntary sector providers competing with the public sector for probation contracts. There are a number of theories as to why the government wants to privatise um, in the criminal justice system. The government would say that it's about um, competition driving quality of services up. Um, other people would say it's about cost, it's about making things cheaper. And, and even the government would, would, would con, um, concede that they, they are looking to make services more efficient. Um, our concern is that it really is about cost um, and it actually may see a driving down of standards rather than driving up of standards and services. Within the prison system, we are very concerned that the UK has the highest proportion of private sector provision than, than really you'll find most places in the world. It is a concern to us because, what well, we're opposed to privatisation of prisons as a matter of principle. We believe that if you are punishing somebody and sending someone to prison is a punishment, then that is the responsibility of the state. The state has tried and convicted that person and you should therefore be responsible for delivering the punishment. We don't believe it is appropriate. It's moral to introduce the profit motive into delivering punishment on people. Um, that, that, that's not right. And there are other concerns as well. For example, in the United States, 
the, the use of private prisons has been one of the main factors in the fact that the United States has one of the highest prison populations per capita in the world. And we have seen scandals in the United States around the private companies. So for example, there was one case of a judge in the United States who was sending children to prison and it, it was revealed that um, the private company running the local prison was paying him a bung effectively every time he sent a child to prison and he was sending children to prison for offences that you wouldn't normally expect a child to go to prison for. And there are, there are other um, concerns as well around the, the lobbying power of these companies. So we are concerned about that. The fact is in the UK there are only effectively two companies that have um, the, the stranglehold over the sector. So again the government's claims that competition um, is, is out there are, are dubious. Britain already has the largest private prison sector in the West and contracts are given to a tiny elite of global security firms. Is that right? And also, the Ministry of Justice says privatisation is cheaper. Well, what does that mean for workers in the public sector? I think it's very dangerous. I think that too much of our society is privatised anyway. Streets and buildings and whole areas of cities. I think uh, this part of the same process. It's basically flogging off the whole country, really. Britain has the largest private prison sector in, in the West. Um, do you think it's, it's right that a large multinational company, at least uh, these contracts only go to a few of them, should be running prisons? Um, do you think, you know, running prisons for profit? No, no, no. Should be, they shouldn't be doing that, man. They shouldn't be doing that for money, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, they, they're really like... That's what I'm saying. They don't understand, man. They don't know that the people that... It's, it's crazy out here, man. They can't, they can't see what happened, the riots that just happened just now, all the things that are going through in England right now, like, and things like this, yeah, that's what's going to get the people, they're going to go even more crazy than that. And things are going to happen, watch. You see the MP games? Like, that's what's going to happen, man. There's so many things that are going to happen. Well, actually, yes, they are giving quite a lot of um, a huge power to uh, such companies, which um, they're using it the wrong way, to be honest with you. I think the government is it's, it's taking too much risk into privatise, privatising sectors like prisons because people are start going to start making money out of it and not making sure that Britain stays as a safe country. So it's important for the government to make sure that it enforces the law in such sectors because it's a very fragile matter of the government because it's, it's, it deals with people that are having problems with doing crime and it's only through the government that such a system can be made fairly. The Ministry of Justice says it's privatising because it's cheaper. Um, uh, I mean, that's fair enough, isn't it? Uh, it will be of more value for money for the taxpayer. It might be more value for money, but is it right for uh, um, our prisoners? I mean, okay, done something wrong, but they've got, and they're paying their dues for it, but it should be done properly. And I don't know, maybe I've seen too, America, too many American films where you've seen what these private um, um, people do. So I don't know. I just feel very uncomfortable about it. If you look at things like rail privatisation or water privatisation, the idea was that you make them cheaper. In fact, what we do is we pay more in subsidies, but that goes out as profit, and it also means that the state loses control. It also means that the idea of justice is no longer something set by the state or by the law, but it's actually set by a private company or their interpretation of the law. No, we're talking about a tiny, tiny proportion of the British population and, and, uh, and its mates. Um, getting extremely rich and and you know I, I think these are people that you know they know the um, the price of everything and the value of nothing and there are some things that should be you know subsidized and will cost money and will not make money but are absolutely at the core of uh, of the values of this country and I think certainly in my lifetime I've always been that way so I'm, I'm deeply suspicious of, of, of any private company that must be loyal first and foremost to its shareholders running things that have to do with defense or justice or health or anything. One of the effects of privatisation is lower salaries in the public sector and indeed fewer jobs in the pub public sector. Um, do you, is there, is it, should we be concerned at the impact that privatisation will have on, on the public sector? Well, I think sometimes maybe a bit of efficiency isn't necessarily a bad thing and I think probably within the public sector there are jobs which maybe don't necessarily need to be there but ultimately you, I don't think you can cut corners with things like the public sector because you know it's obviously important to sort of like daily life in this country and if you start cutting costs and services deteriorate then it's actually the public who suffer. So I'm not a great fan of um, privatisation of the public sector because most of the times they've done it, it doesn't seem to have worked very well. Well I think one of, one of the problems there is that once it's gone uh, private then everybody becomes more vulnerable. 
and I think we should be very uh, wary of getting rid of professionals in most of the, the established professions. It's not just somebody doing a job, they're carrying with them a weight of experience, possibly from years, decades even, and that is, you can't replace that with, uh, with hired hands. So I don't think they should cut any jobs. In fact, I think they should take on more people and build one or two more prisons as well. Hmm, different views there from the public here on the streets of London. But let's find out now what our experts have to say. Privatisation of the justice system will lead to erosion of uh, government uh, uh, accountability uh, because by actually uh, uh, handing the uh, power of running prison services, uh, the government basically would have no say in this. All the government can do is sue the company if they don't like something, and therefore the, the company becomes the decision maker, the uh, rule maker, and uh, it is the company that basically is in control. Uh, I think, in a way, in my view, or in my humble opinion, this is passing the buck, and passing the buck in something like the uh, uh, prison service is very dangerous because it cannot be uh, driven by profit, it has to be driven by the interest of the society, rehabilitation, and what goes with uh, prisoners, the prison, and, and, and the society at large. For the justice system and what needs to be done, that the justice system needs to speak with the professionals who know best how to run the system and uh, work with them together uh, in order to uh, overcome any problems. Uh, interpreters are aware of the uh, austerity measures that are in place. We uh, are very happy to accommodate this. We're very happy to sit with the Ministry of Justice, uh, consult, talk to them and we listen and they should also be listening to us. It is not in the interest of justice to have less qualified or less competent interpreters. This has already led to cases unnecessarily and unduly adjourned, people released unduly from courts or from police stations or detained longer than necessary and uh, that cannot be in the interest of justice. We're very concerned that privatisation is driving down um, salaries and it is driving down the standard of um, staff and their training. Um, and, and we've seen scandals such as the court service um, where, that's, where that's been happening. In the prisons, for example, one of our concerns is around Birmingham. Birmingham is the first public sector prison to be privatised. It's a very large prison, 1,500 and more prisoners. So it's the largest prison the private sector will, ha has yet dealt with in this country. And there, if you look at that prison, it's had a, a troubled history. Successive reports by the inspector of prisons has highlighted as issues that prisoners don't feel safe in that prison and that there are very poor um, staff-prisoner relationships. Now, those are hallmarks of a prison where you have an issue with inexperienced staff and not enough staff because safety and bad relationships are part and parcel of a prison where you have those problems. Now the irony here is that that's absolutely what you, you, we see in pri the private sector. The private sector pays staff less so they tend to be inexperienced at the lower levels and they also pay, um, employ far fewer so the, the, the ratio of staff to prisoners is lower in a private prison than in a public sector prison and yet the government is privatising Birmingham despite the fact that those are established issues already in that jail and we expect to see things get worse and indeed when the private company took it over the first thing it did was announce that it was um, reducing the amount of staff in the prison and so we're watching that situation with a lot of interest because it's the first time that the private sector is dealing with a really large problematic jail that has been in the public public sector. It's been easier for the private sector to claim success when they're building shiny new facilities as they have been thus far but now they're actually taking over something that, that, that the public sector had and we'll see whether they really are as successful as they claim to be. We're concerned about the way that privatisation is occurring that it will start to erode the accountability of government. The Howard Lee does believe that if this, in the end the criminal justice system is the responsibility of the state. The state says what is wrong and right and it then delivers the, the, the process that goes through the courts and then it delivers the punishment or it should deliver the punishment. And we are seeing the, the, the bounds being eroded in all sorts of ways. There is talk, for example, um, that payment by results could even be extended to judges so that judges had a budget 
that they, they had to use when they were sentencing. And that's putting a cost on justice, a price on justice in a very direct way. There are also concerns about privatisation with the police and it's the extent to which policing will be privatised. The, the boundaries are very fluid at the moment and really public opinion is being tested, I think for the first time in a while, about what's actually acceptable for the public to see in the private sector rather than the public sector. And another thing, will the government still be accountable if private Private firms start administering justice. And what will happen? Will private security guards start making arrests? Will managing directors start donning the wings of judges? Well, let's find out what the public thinks. I think um, you only need to look at it in certain things with, with Rail and what they're trying to do with the NHS to see that it will become completely, uh, there'll be no accountability, no sort of sense of regulation, no best practice and it's dangerous. I think uh, essentially we keep doing it, you know, very bad things will happen so yeah, completely against it. Do you think that privatisation could erode the accountability of ministers if things go wrong? In a way, yes, okay, but in the end, I think the buck does always stop somewhere and it goes up the chain. And if a minister's implemented a change of policy on something, then of course it is they that um, give out the contract. So, as happened with the railways, you know, that it was taken back into public ownership. I think we had a ministerial resignation once when Network Rail went a bit wrong as well. So, all of these things, in the end, I think that. The, the public aren't that stupid and they will see that um, you know ministers are responsible for these things. I think it can definitely lead to an erosion of government accountability because for instance uh, I mean the police act directly to essentially with a mandate from the government uh, and to protect the interests of the government however when in cases where for instance say where someone's been uh, arrested wrongly um, if you have a, uh, things like the absence of legal aid you're much less likely to follow that through and uh, thus you're much less likely to even have the sort of spark inside of yourself to think okay I'm going to challenge this and I will hold the government accountable for their actions. I think it must do, yes. I mean the more that's in the hands of private companies which aren't answerable to the people at all but only to shareholders uh, must erode the accountability of the government. What do you think the future could be if privatisation continues and you know the courts become private re run? Well no one will be put away and there will be, well, it will just be chaos everywhere. It will all go wrong. <laughs> I think it, it needs, uh, obviously, like any sort of uh, public system, it needs looking at, it needs constant sort of regulation and auditing and whatnot, but I think it needs to be run, it needs to be run as a public service, it doesn't need to be run where you're you know, constantly privatising things, I think it will, it's extremely dangerous and I think we'll end up with you know, some terrible things happening as a result of it, so I think it needs to be kept public, as with all public services, and um, not privatised. I think like a, a lot of the problems that, that we face, the government seems to feel it has to respond with an instant solution and most of these are long-term problems with a history behind them and they can't be solved overnight it requires really intelligent planning and with the cooperation of the, the particularly the professions who are who are being examined i'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week thanks for joining us if you've got something to say yourself send an email to a simple question at presstv.com that's a simple question at presstv.com i'll see you next week bye bye for now